Now, when it comes to Ukraine, I don't want to say you have unanimity between the Dems and the Republicans, but it's, you know, the Dems seem very in support of this, this you know, our, our support of Ukraine and what we're doing over there. Most Republicans also say that they support what we're doing, though there's a growing body of dissenters uh, within the GOP. And Trump certainly seems to be one of them. Now, he participated in this CNN town hall last night and was asked about Ukraine. Here's part of what he said. Do you want Ukraine to win this war? Uh, I don't think in terms of winning and losing. I think in terms of getting it settled so we stop killing all these people and breaking them. Mr. President, can I just follow up on that? Because that's a really important statement. Excuse me, let me just just follow up. Can you say if you want Ukraine or Russia to win this war? I want everybody to stop dying. They're dying, Russians and Ukrainians. I want them to stop dying. And I'll have that done. I'll have that done in 24 hours. I'll have it done. Now he's getting pushback on that from the more, you know, pro-Ukrainian intervention folks saying, what does that mean? He's going to give it up in within a day. He's going to pull us out of it, start, pull, pull U.S. support, wave the white flag and let Putin have what he's taken thus far. Um, people are upset about that. And it was interesting, just anecdotally, it's a small room, but those are all Republican primary voters in New Hampshire clapping for his answer. So what did you make of it? Well, I was really happy to hear him say that. And, um, you know, and I I think his instincts are exactly right. We just have to end this war and there's not going to ever be a winner or loser. Both sides have been the loser in this. We've killed now between 30,000 and 100,000 Russians um, and over 300,000 Ukrainian troops and 14 to 15,000 civilians. We've destroyed the Ukraine. We've destroyed 60 percent unemployment. The infrastructure is wrecked. The country now, because of the prolong, uh, prolonging of this war, which is a, a U.S. project, the neocons in the White House have prolonged this war and uh, much longer, rather than treating it as a humanitarian crisis and trying to end it quickly, every step the White House has taken, particularly the neocons in the White House, has been to prolong the war and uh, and, expand, and increase the bloodshed. Um, President Biden, we were told, we were sold on the fact that this was a humanitarian issue, that a humanitarian intervention. My son went over there and fought, you know, and that was his impression too. He went over and he fought, you know, as a machine gunner. Yeah. Talked about that. Special Forces Unit and the Kharkiv Offensive. Um, my, and, and, but when President Biden was asked about the objectives of the war, he said it was to get it deposed. Vladimir Putin to do regime change, which is a neocon project, an aspiration of the neocons for decades, for a decade. When his his uh, defense secretary, Lloyd Austin, spoke about the war in April of 2022, or 20, yeah, 2021, 2022, excuse me, he said that the objective, our objective in the war was to exhaust the Russians and degrade their capacity to fight in any other part of the world. Well, that is not a good idea for the Ukrainians. That means we are turning this country into an abattoir for Ukrainian kids in order to achieve a geopolitical objective of, you know, of weakening Russia. And by the way, I don't think it's a good idea for us to be weakening Russia. We are pushing Russia into the camp of China. And uh, and so the whole thing is is kind of a nightmare. And it's the Ukrainians are a victim of U.S. policies and Russian policies. Now, you know, I like what President uh, Trump said uh, during his administration. He actually laid the groundwork for this war. He began selling for the first time Ukrainians offensive weapons. He walked away from the ABM treaty, which was the treaty that limited and made the Russians very nervous because that was the treaty we had signed with the Russians to say neither of us are going to deploy um, the intermediate level, the intermediate range nuclear weapons. That from the Ukraine, is, Ukraine is only 400 miles from Russia. And we could hit Moscow in minutes with those weapons. So it destabilized the area. It made the Russians very, very anxious. And then he continued to push the uh, the borders of NATO right up to the Russian borders, which the Russians had said was a red line. So his administration, although he his intentions, I think, were good, his administration was filled with 
neocons and warmongers and you know swamp creatures and uh, and and pharmaceutical mm. executives who are making mm. decisions that you know did not reflect what President Trump was saying to his base. I want to tell you about the amazing extreme altitude wines from the Bonner Private Wine Partnership. These flavors go great with any hearty meal and meat you're going to serve. They are unlike any wine you've ever tasted. Blackberry, leather, smoke, and little dark cherry. The wines are almost impossible to get on your own. The producers deep in the Andes Mountains make limited quantities. I have a great offer for you right now. If you visit bonnerprivatewines.com slash MKS, that's B-O-N-N-E-R privatewines.com slash MKS, you will not only get wine for over 50% off plus free shipping, you'll also get a bonus bottle of small batch limited production wine from their exclusive wine cellar. That's four bottles for the price of three. It's a deal that's hard to turn down if you are a wine lover like I am. They've cut out the middleman, so you're not going to pay a big markup. Just visit Bonner, B-O-N-N-E-R, privatewines.com slash MKS to claim your bonus bottle and become a part of America's most unique wine club. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.